the Lord is good and all the time. Amen. And that is my testimony this morning. I'm blessed of the Lord. I am born again. I love him with the whole of my heart is the reason why I am standing here this wonderful morning. Amen. Amen. Our bishop is not together with us. As we all know, he traveled to Western Kenya to help bury our father and our grandfather and our great-grandfather, depending on when you joined the ministry. So we, they had a very uh, good send-off yesterday. And uh, he will be coming back in the course of the week. And we continue to pray for him together with the leaders who are not there. So this morning, I'm privileged to share with you the word of God from First Peter. First uh, Peter, chapter 2. I will read 12 verses. And then we'll get into the moment. The sermon title I have is Unity as We Advance. Amen. I thought I would get a, a big amen. I thought unity is a problem, isn't it? Even in church, unity is a problem. Don't you think so? But the Lord is helping us and reminding us this morning that even as we advance for conquest, we have to be united. Look at what Moses told I mean, what God was telling Joshua, that Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you alone. Oh, okay. So you are alert. You and all these people to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. I'm just imagining, were they able, were they going to be able to advance to the land that God was giving them if they were not united? Because otherwise, as they start the journey, this one is saying, no, it's this direction. The other one is saying, no, let's go this way. No, we do not want Moses. We do not want Joshua. And where there is division, the house comes down, okay? So we are going to take the example from uh, 1 Peter Chapter 2, verse 1 to verse number 12. I will read, and I will ask all of us to read together in the version that you have. If you don't have a Bible, we have one on our screens, and so we can read together. So put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation. If indeed you have tested that the Lord is good, as you come to him a living stone, rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious, you yourselves like living stones are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer uh, spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh, which wage war against the soul. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable, so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. Amen. Father, we are so, so privileged to hear your word this morning. 
And Father, even as we sit at the table with you, our King and our Lord, I pray that you may speak to our hearts and feed us from your very word. Build us into a spiritual house this morning. The Lord, we may offer sacrifices to you, our God, who is holy, in the name of Jesus. We pray that your spirit will abide with us and give us even the attention that we need to have towards your word this morning. Be thou glorified and be thou lifted up. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. We had a wonderful first service with the word of God coming to us in a great way, in a very unique way, and we learned several things that we need to do in order to become the people that God has called us to do. And so the, the foundation has already been laid even for this service. And I believe as I walk with you through the scriptures, you're going to get something that will help you as a believer to grow in him and even to help in building the spiritual house that the Father is building today. Amen. You know, Jesus has been building his church more than 2,000 years ago. And every time, every opportunity that comes, in the morning we had an opportunity of a lady giving her life to Christ, and she became a living stone. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, church, when Joyce is standing here, she, she really expects a lot of support. I don't know whether the other pastors feel the loneliness in this place, and I, for some reason today, I'm feeling very nervous. I, and so I really <laughs> covet your prayers and support. Amen. And so every time a person gives their lives to Christ, a stone is added in the building that the Father has been building or Jesus has been building. Amen. And so I'll just walk you through the, the, the first letter of Peter this morning so that you can have a brief understanding of the letter. And so Peter is the author of this epistle. And, and uh, you know, he's speaking, he's speaking to a church that has been dispersed. I don't know whether you have a mental picture of salvation where when you give your life to Christ, you are sent away. Maybe by your family, maybe by your organization, or maybe by the neighbors that you, know, you live with. They just feel like you become an outcast. They just feel that your salvation is a bother to you. And therefore, you are sent away and you are told to go and dwell somewhere else. I don't know whether some of you have experienced an eviction from some place just because you have given your life to Christ. There are some communities when you become a believer, you are sent away. And, and, and therefore, it is a time when you need encouragement. Amen. And Peter is encouraging those dispersed people and is, you know, building them and, 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 you know, reminding them that they have been saved by the grace of God and that it is the blood of Jesus Christ that has made them who they are. The same blood that has saved them, the same blood that has, you know, picked them from their place or their lostness is the same blood that is going to help them to stabilize from wherever they go. Amen. And church, I want to encourage you this morning, if you suffer for doing what is right, for giving your life to Christ, do not worry. The same power that has introduced you to salvation, that has brought you into salvation, is the same power that is going to sustain you in salvation. And I feel that it is the time to encourage the church of Jesus Christ. If there is a time the church has been ridiculed, it is this particular time. One, because us pastors have misbehaved. Secondly, because you believers have misbehaved. And therefore, there is no that test that people used to feel about the church. But I want to tell you that there is still a remnant. Amen. Amen. Not all pastors are doing the wrong things. I, I, let me just assure you, not all the pastors are doing the wrong thing. 
Not all believers are doing the wrong thing. The Lord has preserved for him a remnant. And part of that remnant is GCI. Praise the name of the Lord. I thank God because our message in GCI has never changed. We have always talked about the death, the resurrection, and the ascension of Jesus Christ that has brought us such a great salvation that we are standing on this particular day. Praise the Lord. And so Peter is the author of this epistle. You know, he was a fisherman at first. And Jesus called him to come and be with him. And remember, he promised that I will make you fisher of men. And so he moves from being a fisherman to being a, an apostle. First a disciple of Christ and then an apostle. Amen. Amen. He is a witness of the sufferings of Christ and even his glorious ascension. Praise the Lord. And the purpose of this epistle or letter is to encourage believers to endure suffering and persecution by giving themselves entirely to God. I, I don't know, maybe I just came for myself. But I want to speak to somebody who is going through some situation in your life. You're going through suffering in your life. I came to encourage you that, you know, Jesus Christ is the rock of our salvation. He is the reason why we are called the sons of God. By his death, we have been gathered from everywhere. And we have been brought to him by grace and grace alone. The death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the model for every believer, every one of us. If Jesus died, suffered, and we were just remembering his death and uh, suffering and his resurrection just the, the, a few weeks ago, like two weeks ago. But I want to tell you, this is the model for believers. If you are suffering, it's not because you are a sinner. I just have a few witnesses here. There, there are people who have been searching themselves, and it is good to search yourself, to find out why you're going through why you're, what you're going through. Maybe there is a sin in your life that you need to repent. But in many times as believers, we suffer just because we confess the lordship of Jesus Christ in our lives. And I want to encourage you that after suffering a little while, the Lord is going to come back and position us and put us in a place where the devil can do us no harm whatsoever in the name of Jesus Christ. I know and I remember that I am talking about unity even as we advance. But as I give this background, I want you to really catch up with me and understand where Peter is coming from. And therefore, if we are going to endure suffering, then the Father is going to call us faithful. And you know, this suffering will build us and we will become living stones. You know, we become living stones by coming to Jesus Christ. Who is the cornerstone? The living stone. The stone that the builders rejected, which has become the chief cornerstone. Amen. Amen. And so the emphasis of Peter is about the great salvation that Jesus has given unto us, that we have received by grace and grace alone. And so in the first chapter, Peter is saying that he is the apostle of, of Jesus Christ and he is speaking to the elect who are exiled, you know, in, in Pontus, in Galatia, in Cappadocia, in Asia, in Bithynia. And he's saying, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, in the sanctification of the Spirit for obedience to Jesus Christ and for the sprinkling with his blood. And then he says to them, may peace and grace be added to you. Amen. Eh? Amen. Are you looking at your Bible? Look at your Bible. Does it say may grace and peace be added to you? Okay. Maybe media you can project that scripture. 1 Peter 1 verse 2. 
so that those who do not have a Bible can see it clearly. I love the details of the Bible. 1 Peter 1 verse 2. Media? Okay, let me read for you. According to the foreknowledge of God the Father, in the sanctification of the Spirit, for obedience to Jesus Christ and for sprinkling with his blood, may grace and peace... I wanted you to get that word. Multiplication is not the same as addition. Hallelujah. And therefore, Peter is praying for those who have been dispersed to those regions because of their faith that grace and peace be multiplied to them. And I want to declare to you, church, that may grace of God and the peace of God be multiplied to you in the mighty name of Jesus so that you may be able to stand even in times that are difficult. Amen. So that was the prayer that Peter prays for the people. So the first thing I see, uh, even as we transition to this, unity as we advance. If we are going to be divided as a church, then I can tell you that advancement and conquering will be so difficult for us. We need to be united in purpose. We need to be united in the vision. We need to be united as we go so that we may conquer and get more land for Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. So he begins by telling them to long for spiritual milk. Praise the name of the Lord. Please walk with me and I'm sure the Lord is going to bless you. There is a way I received this message and I just want to deliver it in the same manner, possibly the Lord enabling me so that we can be built up together in our faith and even in our pursuit for the, for the conquest in the name of Jesus Christ. So the first thing that we need to do is to put away everything that we have accumulated for ourselves. You know, as you come to Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter whether you know that you have been a sinner or you have been even a good person. But I tell you that every person that is born of a woman is a sinner by nature. By one, ma uh, one person, one man, sin came to the whole world and everyone that is born is born a sinner. But by one man again, sin has been taken away and we have been born into righteousness. And that is by Jesus Christ. And therefore he's saying, as you come to him, Jesus Christ, then put away all malice. Amen. And by the way, Peter is, is not, uh, a pastor was telling us in the morning, as he was talking about the church in Laodicea. You know, John is not speaking to, uh, in a crusade, calling sinners to come. You know, he's speaking to a church. And he's telling them, you know, you have to fire up. You cannot be uh, lukewarm. As a believer, I came to speak to you, believers, that God is calling us to a higher place of calling where we need to put away lukewarmness and become either hot or cold so that he knows how to deal with us. You know, if you are hot, he knows how to deal with you. If you are cold, he knows how to deal with you. But if you are lukewarm, he knows how to spit you out of his mouth because you are testless. Okay? And so Peter is talking to them and he's telling them, if you have come to this cornerstone, then you have to put away malice. And he's speaking to church. I told you he was speaking to the dispersed believers. So there was malice even amongst believers. And there could be malice in GCI. May the Lord have mercy on us. Because the kind of calling that he has called us with is a calling that is higher. And we cannot afford to, to live the same way we have been living in the past. May the Lord take away malice from the church. May the Lord take away envy 
and deceit. In fact, the Bible says all deceit from the church and hypocrisy. Split personality. Schizophrenia. You know, you are a, a believer. You behave like this in front of believers and you behave like that in front of non-believers. That is madness in the kingdom. You know, it is pure madness. We need to be the same with believers and with non-believers. And that is what Peter is conquering. This is what is going to bring unity as we advance. Can you imagine as a church we are advancing for conquest and then there is malice amongst us. There is envy amongst us. There is hypocrisy amongst us. Are we going to conquer anything? No way. And so he says that you put away all these things and like newborn babes, Hallelujah. Long for spiritual milk. And you know, being a mother, this really reminded me of my children when I was getting my children. You know, when I got those little boys, they didn't know how to feed themselves. They didn't even know how to handle themselves. Let me tell you, if I neglected those human beings, they would not be here today. They would have died isn't it? But God, by his grace alone, enabled me to feed those children on milk. And that is all they knew. The problem with us believers is that we know what to eat. <laughs> we do not know how to wait upon him who can give us spiritual milk so that we may grow into a spiritual body. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. I wish you could preach together with me. And so he's saying, like a newborn baby, you know, crave for the spiritual milk that by it you may grow up into salvation. Hallelujah. There is a, uh, there, there's a thing that is called growing up into your salvation. Yes, all of us have come to this salvation carrying our own things. You know, heavily loaded with sin. But he's telling us to offload even as we come to Christ. And desire the milk. Some of us have become babies in the kingdom. But he's telling us we need to grow up into salvation. You cannot remain a baby. In the kingdom of God. Let me tell you, I, I hear people talk about the way they have been believers for 40 years. But when you look at them, they are still carrying, you, you, you know, the feeding bottle and feeding from it. You know, that is a total waste of 40 years. You have to grow in salvation. You have to mature. In faith, maturity eliminates envy and malice and slander. Praise the name of the Lord. If these things are still being mentioned in church, it shows that we are still babies in the kingdom. And so, as a believer, you need to depend daily on the living word of God. You have to feed from the word of God. He says that if indeed... You, test, you have tested that the Lord is good. Then you have to seek and search for the spiritual milk. There, there, there is no other place you will get the spiritual milk other than from this living word of God. This is our counsel. This is our food, our daily food that we must eat every day. And you know, it's, it's really interesting the way we know how to feed the physical body. In the morning, somebody is busy looking for breakfast. At lunchtime, we are busy looking for lunch. And in the evening, we are still looking for food to feed this physical man. But how many times do you feed the spiritual man? Because that is what is going to give us the conquest. Amen. I'm telling you, pastor told us in the morning that you have to really come and die. You know, like, because... 
you, you, you have to give up what was his word. That, that, you know, you surrender your life. You let go of your life and present yourself as a sacrifice. Because unless you present yourself as a sacrifice, if you are told to go to a certain location, you will not go. Because you are thinking about your safety and your security. And I tell you, unless we do that, unless we give up, you know, on ourselves and surrender ourselves to the hand of the Lord, then we are going to abide here. The Israelites could not go to Canaan, you know, not an, unless they surrendered themselves to the hand of the Lord. Yes, I understand that you were born a sinner, but you don't remain a sinner. You have an opportunity to become a saint. Yes, I understand that you were called with nothing. But there is nowhere in the Bible where we are encouraged to stay empty. <laughs> Our Gio likes to say that laborers are the ones who are called. And you know, they have no skill. They have no understanding. They just come and present themselves with their labor. You know, being a laborer means that you are not qualified. But did Jesus expect them to remain as laborers? He expected them to grow. That's why he told the, the, the disciples that come and I will make you. There is a making when you come to Christ. You cannot stay empty when you come to Christ. You must surrender yourself to him so that he can make you. Praise the name of the Lord. There is a call for believers to grow in salvation. And this growth will happen if we take the word of God as everything we need and everything we have. Praise the name of the Lord. Longing for the spiritual milk. And the second division of uh, what I read this morning is presenting Jesus as the chief cornerstone. Hallelujah. He says in verse number four, as you come to him, that stood out for me. That you who is there and has heard the word of God and you have come to Jesus. As you come to him who a living stone. Praise the name of the Lord. God gave me a privilege. You know where I live? I, I live outside Nairobi. <laughs> I live in Machakos. And so where I live, there's a lot of construction. And as a believer, as a, as, a, as a pastor, I love to learn from my environment. So I go many times to the construction sites, and I want to see what's going on. And so recently, somebody was constructing just near where I am. And because she's my relative, I took keen interest in what was being constructed. I saw her, you know, bringing so many types of stones and to the construction site. And I looked at the shapes, some of the stones, especially the ones, I, I only know the word in Kamba, forgive me. And, and, and because you people have been complaining, I speak a lot of Kamba on the <laughs> I won't even tell you the name. So I saw the stones that go to the foundation are shapeless. They, they, some look like this, others look like that, and they are used for the foundation. And in that foundation, you will, put, you will see a lot of metal going in there, a lot of, uh, you know, ballast go there, and so many other things going there. And then as you put up the walls, you will see the machine cut, you know, stones that are very well shaped, isn't it? They are shaped well. Others are made by hands of men. They try to make them look very beautiful and all that. I realized that there are different stones when it comes to construction. And I was even looking at the sand. And I was, I was thinking, even these ones are small stones. Refined. And they have been made to become small, very tiny stones. I looked at the ballast with different sizes and also shapes. And they are also stones. So there were several stones in that construction site. And so those things, every part of, every single stone went to do its work in the building. And today if you look at that building, it's so beautiful. One amazing thing 
is that after every stone was put in its place, they came and plastered the walls. And you cannot tell the foundation stone, you cannot tell the machine cut, you cannot tell the sand, you cannot tell the ballast, you cannot even, you know, see whatever else that was put there. They plastered and they painted. And what I see when I go to the site is a beautiful house. I want to tell you believers that some of us are shapeless in the kingdom. But we are the ones who are putting the foundation of the spiritual house that the Father is building. Some of us have been shaped very nicely. And we are the ones who put up the wallings of the house. Some of us are very small, very small faith. In fact, some of you say that we are very tiny. You know, we, we are new believers. We do not understand the word of God. But I tell you, you have a place in the construction of the house. The spiritual house that the Father is building. Some of us are like sand that can be blown away. But I tell you, when the builder, when you are put in the hand of the builder, then you become so useful and so contained that you will go to your place and help in the shaping of the house that the Father is building. There is no insignificant believer Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And I want to encourage you that you have a role to play in the spiritual house that Jesus has been building for more than 2,000 years. And so if we have to advance for the conquest, you have to come. Ballast has to come. Sand has to come. Cement has to come. The stone has to come. Every shape and size. Praise the name of the Lord. Have you ever met, there is a time I met a small child who spoke something that really constructed my life. And they are a stone in the spiritual building of the Lord. Never ignore anybody in the kingdom of God. In the church, let me tell you, there are times you just look at the way Reverend Alan presents himself in that suit. And you just want to be associated with Alan. Let me tell you, church, Alan may not be able to give you what you're looking for. Maybe what you're looking for in this church is being carried by a Sunday school child. Do not choose. Let the builder choose for you who you need, even as we advance for conquest. Because he knows what is right for you. Praise the name of the Lord. There is a prayer that a saint who is seated at the back can pray for you and the world changes for you. Do not choose. All of us are stones in the hand of the builder. And I thank God that the builder is Jesus Christ. And therefore we present ourselves to him as materials for construction. He knows which one to use for what. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, I looked up to find out what it meant, uh, you know, to, to, to say a cornerstone. And I checked, I found that in Israel, they never used to, 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 to put up a slab. They used to get a big, big, huge stone. They, you know, and, and I saw that in the foundation... They, there was a stone, they, what they called the cornerstone, that was weighing, was it 80 tons? That became the cornerstone for the temple of Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Amen. And there is another stone that was the master cause for the foundation that weighed 600 tons. And so they put those cornerstones in the foundation of the building. And I tell you, this is the one that determined the anchors of the building. It determined the bigness of the, of the building. It determined how the shape of the building was going to look like. And therefore, today, we have a huge cornerstone. And that is Jesus Christ. If he is in the foundation... He is going to determine the angles of the house. He is going to determine the shape of the building. 
He is going to determine how tall we go with the building. We have a chief cornerstone. And that cornerstone is Jesus Christ. He is the one who unifies the structure. Let me tell you, if you are in Jesus Christ, surrender yourself more and more to him. So that he can unify us. And we will not go back to the plea of Peter that put away malice, put away envy and hypocrisy. We will be held in the hand of the Lord. And he is going to use us to build the house that he is talking about here. Hallelujah. And so if he is the chief cornerstone, it means that he is the foundation of our faith. Church, today I am not standing on the foundation of what people have said. I am not standing on the foundation of my denomination. I wish I had a witness. And I am not against denominations. I am not against the words that were spoken to us. But I am standing on the foundation of my faith in Jesus Christ. I am standing on the living stone. Remember, I have told you about the stone that is used to build houses in Siokimau. And I tell you, those are dead stones. But the Bible, Peter is encouraging us that we have come to the living stone. There is a difference between dead stone and living stone. Praise the name of the Lord. And he goes ahead to say that each one of us is a living stone. When you come to Jesus, let me tell you, there is no religion in the world. All these other religions in the world, they have never been called to gain the life of their leader. <laughs> I've not heard, I've done Islam. And I have never found anywhere where they are being encouraged to come and take the life of Muhammad. No. They just believe in their holy book and in the, the, the tales that they have been told. But I want to tell you that Jesus Christ has called us to come and have an exchange. You know, we give up our dead lives and put on the life of Christ. Oh, Christianity is about putting on Jesus Christ, which separates or differentiates it from every other religion of the world. We come and get life from Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You are just responding like you have not believed it or you have not received that life. I pray that by the end of the service, you will receive that life. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Oh, wow. So he is the foundation of our faith. And when we come to him, the chief cornerstone, we become like him. He is the origin of our faith. I am not able to finish my sermon, but that's okay. And so when we come to him, we have to be built in him. Jesus Christ, our Lord, is the living stone. And I want you to really understand this. He, uh, us who follow him, you know, we are like living stones, like I said earlier, and we are being built into a spiritual house. So the building that Peter is talking about is becoming a spiritual house. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, the desire of our Lord Jesus Christ and the desire of Peter for the believers is that they grow in him and they get built in him. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I have looked at the time and it, has, it is really not working well with me. But I want to encourage us, even if I don't finish, let us be built in Christ. He cannot choose us. The, 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 the other portion there, let me just jump to uh, verse 7, uh, uh, verse 9. He says that you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You know, I, I look at the power of choice and I imagine 
Sometimes when I go to the city, I look at how many people God has. And amongst all those people, just in Nairobi alone, imagine he went and picked Joyce. He chose me. And he made me a chosen race and generation. He made me a holy person. He made me a royal priest. So that I can offer sacrifices that are holy to him. You who has been chosen by God, he has an expectation. He has an expectation that you become a royal priest for him. So that you may offer sacrifices that are holy. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. You cannot be chosen and live like the ones who he left out there. He left so many people and chose you. And you cannot be chosen. And when you come to him, the living stone, you behave like the ones he left out there in the field. We have to have a change of direction. I am not able to finish my sermon, but that is okay. So just remember that you are a chosen generation. And therefore, if he has chosen you, keep yourselves honorable. Praise the Lord. The last part, he says, keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds. There is a difference between speaking and doing. Somebody can speak about you and say you are a very bad person. But when you do, do as a good person. It doesn't matter what they say. It matters what you do. Praise the name of the Lord. And so in conclusion, as we advance, we need to remember who we are. We are a chosen nation. We are a royal priesthood. We are a holy nation that has been called out of darkness into the marvelous light of the Father. And therefore, we need to conduct ourselves as such. We have to be different. We have to put away all these things so that we may advance for the conquest. And as we do that, unity is very important. We must respect each other in the body of Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Pastor was telling us that we need to sacrifice the things that we say. Gossip is not one of the things that the Father is expecting from a chosen generation. <laughs> that is for those he left out there. But our work is to protect and preserve one another and preserve our faith. Let us rise up on our feet. Hallelujah. Unity as we advance. We cannot be united until and unless we come to the living stone. And we cannot become living stones unless we come to him. When we come to him, we become alive. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And I want us to go before the Lord and respond to this message. Are you a living stone? Have you encountered the living stone? Have you encountered the cornerstone that Peter is talking about this morning? And if you haven't, there's an opportunity. Peter prayed that grace and peace be multiplied to the people of God. I pray that this grace and peace will be multiplied to you.